so yeah, so we we did used to do this this uh, quite regularly with the the um, the live streaming, uh, the video chat, that kind of thing, and it was always very cool. We um, and I, I don't know, Joey, you know, if you felt differently, feel free to let me know. But <laughs> I always liked the the interactiveness of it. The one of the reasons we stopped doing it was just the production value. It it wasn't on par with other podcasts that I was listening to. You when you are relying on the streams audio, it never sounds quite as good. Your show can also become a bit disjointed. So that's why we decided to put it down for a bit. But yeah, I think it's a nice thing to do every now and then. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. It's gonna be it's gonna be good to have some uh, some feedback from from listeners and previous guests and all that kind of stuff so yeah guys get in, get involved in the in the show and we will try to answer anything the live stream has yeah. driven Joey to drink I don't know do you even drink Joey? <laughs> I drink uh, usually I have a beer with dinner in summer <laughs> very respectful I always feel like I'm the only person that's ever actually having a beer doing the show but uh and just so everyone knows, we don't normally record during the day when, when Brian's having his drink. It's normally at night. Yeah, so. no, we're used to it. Yeah. We'll, probably, yes. we'll probably end up continuing to record daytime now, I think, was what we went, we shifted to, but we'll see. Yeah, I think I think we'll stick with that. Because we all now, all of us have got little, little ones, and it's a pain in the butt with bedtimes, and um, yeah, that's mainly it. Bedtimes, feeding times, it's not easy. Well, before before we get into the show, actually, Brian, how's everything going? Going well. Because you've had a whirlwind yep. couple of weeks. Yep. In and out of hospital, in and out of hospital. But uh, no, Lani's good now. So um, I had my mum over helping for three weeks. Don't know what we would have done without her. So thanks, mum, nice. if you happen to yeah. be watching this. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, all is good now. Uh, baby's going well. Lani's doing pretty well. So the road to recovery has started. But, um, Excellent. so how old is she uh, five weeks five, five weeks, weeks but her due date was like five days ago so it's weird yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah right very early yeah mm. yep. good cool all right so last episode what did we talk about who did we talk to it was me and um, you no 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 that's last, right last one was no, no, mo- no, last no, one was, was Modet. oh no, yes was, that's yeah, right yeah, yeah, that oh, was my last one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I missed that one, yeah. Joey. You, you missed a cracker, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Paul's a, a, seems like a good guy, man. That was a, a very cool episode. Yeah, good to do some internationals yeah. as well because it's obviously hard with the time difference uh, for everyone involved. But um, yeah, it was cool to get some some internationals on again. Maybe we'll try to do that again, season five. Yeah. Yep. And then I, yeah, so the, then the episode before that would have been the one, Joey. You and I we talked about the yep. um, your workshop. Has there been? I'm trying to remember if there was anything that you were. Yes, the um, windows. That's right, the windows. Oh, yeah, I have a window. You can, you can just see it in the side of my. Yeah, where are we? So, yeah, there is a window in there, um, and solar panels on the roof, and waiting for an inspection, which is taking forever for the solar, and then we can turn it on. So um, that's going to be cool. Yep. Uh, but otherwise, the workshop's just going. Got the air conditioning cranking, and it's nice and cool. And um, yeah, what, temp- cool. what what temperature does it need to be in Auckland for you to require air conditioning? It's mainly just humidity. It's just right, okay. sticky hot. It's like okay. you know, 70, 80 percent humidity, and yep. 25, 26 degrees in the workshop, and it just starts to become a bit of a sweat shop. Um, but yeah. unfortunately, the aircon doesn't reach to my office, so it's, it's like different, quite a big difference between here and the actual workshop. Yeah, my my aircon in here doesn't reach anywhere because there ain't yeah. no. It's no. a big hot box. <laughs> I can see it would be really effective with that ceiling insulation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the joys of a heritage listed uh, workshop. Yep. Just an oven. I was when when I was there last. No, it was March this year. I was amazed at the the vibe because it is. It just feels like, as you say, Brian, because it's a tin shed. There's no there's no separation between you and the outside world. You kind of 
you know what's what's that um that alfresco living that's kind of what it it, it makes you feel like <laughs> alfresco living <laughs> yeah it's pretty much it feels like you're woodworking outside yeah. Um, that's what which you know. I would probably say not most wood, workshops wood in Australasia are probably that, that essentially just a shed. Um, it's yeah. not till you start getting. I think North American guys seem to have to have fully insulated buildings because actually they actually have a winter, um, and they exactly, actually do yeah. something about making making it more like a house rather than just a shed. Yep, that's cool. We got we got Sean Kirsch in from. Shaper, he's my my guy at Shaper. Nice. You're right. So, um, hi, Sean. One thing we did talk about last la- on my last po- podcast, uh, Robin. I asked some people for some feedback on doing a fake live edge um, mm. piece of oak, and I got quite some really good information back from a few people. I forget who um, did it actually who gave me that the yeah. helpful information. But yeah, essentially I was on the right track and it seems that it's something that people do quite often in the States even where you just can't get uh, a piece of oak the right size for whatever project you're on. And it seems like doing a fake live edge is relatively common. Um, and the trick is just to get a piece of oak with a nice wavy grain in it and then follow that wavy grain with, with the cut along the front. Um, use a draw knife to then kind of under under bevel it or put some accent to it so it's not just a dead straight cut uh, and then I'm actually I've found some um, found a company who does a specific timber bleach it's a two-part product and I haven't actually got it yet but it's in the in the post so I'm going to mask off like a you know 30 odd mil of sapwood along that that live edge oh, I was going to ask about the sap how you were going to do the yeah sapwood I'm going to bleach um, I'm going to bleach that strip in and then do our finishing on top of all that and hopefully that will end up yeah, looking cool. um it looks pretty cool I've, I've just made the cut i've jig, jigsawed out the cut of it today um and we've got some kind yep. of really cool grain features where i was able to follow around knots and things and um so i think it's going to work yep. out pretty cool nice um, Robin is either frozen or he's had a stroke. Yep. So I'm going to go and re-invite him to the room. Okay. So everybody just direct questions at Joey. Oh, God, then I'm going to have to read. <laughs> it's Christmas. like Wayne's World when Garth when Garth's left in front of the camera just going, oh. <laughs> Somebody asked me a question. Oh, what's up, Smith Mags? Ryan, what's up? There he is back again. Did, did, did you like my question, Joey? Yeah, thanks. Because I know how much you... I don't know how much you love getting that question. What, you, what like was it? What was the? What was the? Um, was it a door that you did? It, it was, was a door. wasn't it? A door that. Go on. So this is a this is a, a video that uh, Joey did many many years ago, I'd say. Now. Yeah. And it was made with a beautiful beautiful timber, and then he painted it, and he put up this YouTube video, and everyone just destroyed him in the comments for painting this beautiful door. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was funny. It I love, bad. I love Robin that you're 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 trolling one of your co-hosts. Like, <laughs> just let the internet do that. We just we just sit back and watch. Um, I was trying to reply directly to a message that someone said, um, but ah, uh, oh, there we go. That's why. Okay, that won't happen again. Um, yeah. So, what were we talking about? What were we talking about? Can... There is a, there is a, there's a question there from. Um, uh, reading furniture, reading furniture. Oh yeah. What ideas did you have about your shop layout prior to moving in, and did that completely change once you'd moved in? Uh, so you're fully set up now, right? Yeah. Joe, sure, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, my, I had a long time to to think about how my workshop was going to be laid out, and it's really yep. similar to what I planned it to be. The only big change is I shifted where my sheet goods rack was going to be, so I can drag sheet goods right off the rack and straight onto the sliding saw. Um, otherwise, everything is really close to how I kind of envisaged it to be. So, um, And it's working, like I haven't had to use everything yet, but so far it's working really well. And we've got probably triple the amount of space that I had in the old workshop, even though it's relatively this, pretty much the same size workshop, the layout is just so much more efficient. So. So far, so good. I guess it's just that thing. Once you get everything set up in a workshop, 
the tweaks tend to be minor ones, mm. like moving a bench around or moving maybe a couple of pieces. But if you had that exact same footprint again, and you moved all the stuff into it, your layout probably would change pretty dramatically, I reckon. Possibly, um, yeah. I'd certainly, yes. There's all sorts of things could change, yeah. Um, yeah. Really, so I would with just, my with. Oh, you go, Joe. I was just going to say, even now, I, if I was going to change, I would just make it bigger. <laughs> even though I'm in and I've got lots of space, <laughs> I would just give myself more space. But that's just one of those things. With um, with my move back to Townsville, I'm going to be going back into the same shop that I was in a year ago. And so I've been using this time to try and figure out how I'm going to adjust my layouts for it to be better and I can't and I think that's what's kind of interesting is once you figure that out you just move that to your next space I mean I'm going to move back into the same shop the same space and I can fix any mistakes that I've that I or you know any layout issues that I had before but because it's slowly evolved over time I, I can't think of any changes so maybe you only ever really spend the first year figuring that out then from there on that's your layout regardless of the space yeah I, I agree to a certain amount that you get used to something being one way like if your table saw is facing one direction that's just how you think of that space and you and you kind of don't even think should I turn it 90 degrees and then everything else has to change and even if that might be mm. better you're just used to it as it is and so you just kind of that's how you go yeah like for me, right. in terms of set out of my workshop, it hasn't really changed that much, except my benches have all changed. I used to have like, I don't know, more traditional woodworking benches, which were heavy, didn't really move much. Well, they would move, but it would require a bit of force to move them. Um, whereas now I've got these two big welded, one there and one there, um, and they've got old drawers in them and things. So lots of storage in them so I can keep my tools close to my bench as opposed to having to go to a tool wall. Um, and I've really enjoyed those. I don't think I'd go back to any other type of bench. Mm. Um, but in terms of actual machinery, I haven't really added much since I've been in this space because there isn't really, it's 110 square meters. So there's not a huge amount more room mm. and there's not a huge amount more that I need. I, like rather than adding an extra tool, it would probably be me. I think I've discussed on the show, well, I have discussed on the show, upgrading a thicknesser or going to a thicknesser and jointer as separate tools. And I got some really good advice back from people on that actually. Um, again, people DM the responses to the show and it'd be so good if people added them to the comments for each of the, the shows so that other people could uh, pick up those tips. Somebody said to me, like rather than getting a separate uh, thicknesser and then using my jointer just as a jointer rather than a jointer thicknesser, why not buy another jointer thicknesser and then you've got two jointers and two thicknessers. That's not silly. I thought that was kind of interesting because, yeah, yeah, because the so bed on my... Um, on one and jointing on the other, yeah. Or even just working on two different jobs where, you know, they've got, they've got completely different dimensions, you're not having to unlock tables. I don't know. Having two thicknesses would be pretty so. cool. Um, you could do... You could, you could have, if you had two thicknesses, you could have them in a line. And if you were needing to machine square stock, <laughs> you just put it through one and then twist it 90 degrees and straight into the next one and one kind of production line. That would be kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. Talk about luxury woodworking. You know, I don't know what I need, so I'll just buy two of them. You know, so that, that should be fun. Let's see, maybe down the line I'll get a third. Don't know. I'll just yeah. put it, well, put it next really, to my Porsche. That would be really cool if you actually had to take really thick stock and machine it down to something stupid and you just have it going through three consecutive thicknesses, just feed one to the other. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one pass. Yeah, one pass and you're done. That'd be cool. Brian, you were talking about moving, weren't you, in the beginning of the year? Wasn't there all rent issues? Oh, there's always rent issues, you know. It's like anywhere where you rent a space, um, you're not the landlord of your own destiny. So mm. you just wait to hear and hopefully not hear anything. So but, clearly um, nothing happened and nothing came of it. No, not yet. But like I've been in this space for coming up six years. So I've definitely got a good run out of it, which has mm. been great. Whereas I know so many other makers who have sort of 
signed a two year lease somewhere and it's literally two years and then you're looking for another place and as all woodworkers know moving a workshop is incredibly painful that's not fun and some, sometimes literally sometimes literally on the way out of my last yep. place I dropped my um, edge sander on my leg um, the I was putting it in one, to one of those moving trucks, you know, like you've just used Joey, and that's why mm-hmm. one of the first questions I asked you was how good was the lift? Right. Because on my truck, if the, the back of the truck's here, it would lift on this point first. So it would do uh, that and then start coming up like that. Cool. And it did that, and it just flipped flipped this top-heavy edge sander straight onto, my, onto me, and I tried to catch it, sort of slid it down my leg. Uh, Massive bruise. Yeah. That's so fun. No good. Moving, yeah. Ugh, moving heavy uh, stuff it sucks. God, it's not good. Fortunately, here I'm okay. Like the access is a bit better. Whereas my old workshop, when I shared in the building with um, with like butter, it was corridors, windy corridors, yeah. narrow doors. Whereas, yeah, like here, as you can see, it's like straight in, straight out, double doors. You can back a um, back a trailer or a truck or whatever up to there. So. Yeah, I guess it depends, but it's obviously not much fun just because of the weight of things to move. Like, yeah. the idea of moving that bandsaw is not something I'm looking forward to. <laughs> what's, what's your shop like, Joey, in terms of access? Because you're on a residential property, so do you have a nice drive coming up to it? Yeah, uh, that was the biggest kind of debate of where we deciding where we build the workshop was I don't want a big steep driveway that everything's going to fall over in if I'm trying to shift furniture or anything you you know you don't want it to have to fall out of your van as you're loading it or whatever um could be quicker yeah Uh, but yeah we we've got pretty good um now like so we we did the the earthworks so we have a uh not a flat driveway but it's not crazy steep and we've probably got enough parking around the workshop for 10 cars so um, we've got plenty of space. There's actually enough space for like a six-wheeler truck to come in and turn around and, and get out. So eventually when yeah, I get well. a little forklift, we'll, I'll be getting deliveries straight to me. But at the moment, the companies don't want to know about it. If, if I say hand unload, yeah. that's not acceptable. Yep. So yeah, that's a pain in the butt. Yeah, you must be looking forward to getting back to your workshop, uh, Robin. Say again? You must be looking forward to getting back to your workshop. Oh, I've I've planned it all out. I'm going to paint the walls this time. So it used to be just grey um, concrete block. I'm going to paint it like a like a charcoal dark black, so I can try and create a, a nice bit of mood in there. Been thinking about fancy the, YouTube workshop, eh? Well, well that's it's, uh, I'm sure you guys know Colin Furs. Um, yes. I, I thought about yep. it on his latest workshop video. He's painted his walls black, yeah, and it yeah. looks so rad I'm mm. definitely doing that um, the ceiling I've, I've got to do some insulation work yeah just and you know the worst thing and this is for everyone listening I've come on this show talk to you guys about this stuff every couple of weeks and I just all I hear about it the things that you're making and to not be able to make them after having that literally below my feet for the last few years yeah. has killed me yes are you going to do something cool with the ceiling in there? If you're going to do cool black walls, so like, and you obviously need to insulate it, and do some like cool timber battens or something. Or? So what? The problem with this, the the ceiling is it's very low. So I'm luckily I'm a short guy, yeah. so I I can win. But even going up between the the joists, if I was to bring the ceiling down to the joist level, you're taking you're actually taking a fair bit of space away. So you know those cavities all right. all that add up. On top of that, the floorboards above are the spacing is, you know, during the seasons, there's some pretty big gaps there. So anything that I put in there, I've got to consider the fact that with my two wonderful little children who like turning water inside out, there will be stuff coming through the floor. So (laughs) I want to make something that's. You know, I might, pot- Tap on. <laughs> <laughs> I might potentially do a sort of a, um, a, a earth wall, you know, the, the soft insulation stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Put a layer of that in and then put in a removable ceiling panel, like in an office. 
so removable okay. seating panels so that will hopefully do something but the problem then is if you go removable and you're trying to stop a thicknesser the noise of a thicknesser going up that's that's going to do nothing yes yeah that's true Harvey Woodcraft will will Robin finally buy a table saw I it's like I, the enduring theme of our podcast for what <laughs> three seasons four seasons I, I'm I'm getting close and I feel like I've said that before so I know that it's just going in one ear and out the other but no ever since that episode where we talked about the the track saw and, and etc um, I actually had someone up in Townsville uh, amazingly contacted me and said I've got a, um, a, a, a drop saw for you we'll we'll swap some timber and you can take it you know all in the in, in the, the interest of keeping costs down so the table saw can come quicker ah very nice nice yeah so yeah that uh that saw stop with the sliding table i think that's eventually going to be a thing because man you know i just I looked at i looked at other sliding tables and it just gets so expensive so quick and you've got to have the right workshop you've got to have a proper proper workshop to to put one of those things in so yeah I super it, super flat floor huge footprint three phase power yeah That's i was cool. watching the the the, the video with uh, yeah. with uh, the Instagram video of Leroy where he put, got all his tools into his oh my god um, yeah um, reading furniture and <clears throat> you've got the eyes loading it unloading it setting it up and you know I'm on this wonky slab underneath the house with a with a door uh, an eight an eight twenty wide door access there's no way I'm I'm ready to jump to those sort of tools so yeah it's no. gonna have to be something saw stop or down I just bought myself a, a trailer. And if, if you ask anyone what an 8x5 trailer is, they'll tell you that it's a 2.4 meter trailer. But not mine. Mine is 2350 internal <laughs> diameter, uh, internal length. Do you know how annoyed I am? Because I can still get a 2.4 in there, but I specifically went for that because I can get 2. And I think sheet goods are 2440, aren't they? Yeah, typically. Yeah. yeah. So um, maybe it's they did their measurements for the total length, not the inside length. Well, in researching afterwards, and this is a PSA for anyone out there buying a buying a, a trailer. In doing more research afterwards, they say even though an eight x five internally should be two point four by one point five, you've got to check it every single time because there's the quality on quality control in these things is it's, it's loose to say the least. So uh, yeah, check your trailer before you buy it. Yes. I see the Technique mm. Interiors can cut 2.4 on a 2.4 saw, so there you go, I'm wrong, that's fine then, good on you. Um, <laughs> the ones I had seen, all the ones I had seen, the, the length of the sliding saw wasn't what you could actually cut, so I'm sure there are other mates out there who are more honest about the length of their sliders. <laughs> <laughs> God, can you imagine if we did live shows all the time, how many times we'd be having to do corrections? Because <laughs> <laughs> what you guys don't realize is we have a, a legal department who we run half the stuff, you know, most of the stuff just been cut and ditched because all the stuff that we say is so controversial. Well, it's um, mostly stuff about Joey's clients. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I just we had a question i don't know if i don't know if you guys answered this while i was away um ash from uh woodwork and whiskers so um i just want to do a quick shout out here so ash is uh he's uh, got an instagram page where he does these essentially he's dedicated a lot of it to just bringing light to, to makers all around australia um, that's how i got to know ash a couple of years ago uh, woodwork and whiskers if you're interested in meeting other makers around australia definitely go check it out he um asked a question earlier how did you guys initially come together which i think is a is probably a fitting time to answer that question um for anyone who doesn't know joey and i originally started this in six what year was that joe was it as far back as that i feel like could have been um so it was it was joey uh myself and jordan 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 crawford uh, crawford that's right um who's he's out in western australia and then 
some stuff happened and, and essentially uh, Jordan couldn't continue. So that's when we got Brian on board in 20. You can t tell I've got a dad brain. Seven, I don't remember any seven, of this shit. 17, 18? I think it was 18. 18, yeah. 18. Yeah. Yeah. I think and, I came on as a guest for you guys yeah. once. And I think, right. I think that was what, what prompted it. Um, because Joey and I met and sort of said, you know, let's get a third person, you know, who's, who's good. Um, Brian's got a nice sexy accent, so that'll <laughs> help propel the, the show. Yeah, two people show. Yeah. And I bring, I bring, I bring, I bring parrot, I bring parrot background noise as well. Yeah, as well. It's good. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny that the th I think the three man show works great when it's the three of us. As soon as you have a guest on, and now it's three people interrogating one person, the yeah. dynamics get get a, get a bit weird. Uh, uh, another question there, Joey. Do you have any special off air client stories you want to share for Instagram? Can I just say? answer do not do not share any of them joy there are stories but i shall never speak of them because what everyone here doesn't <laughs> know is that there was things that happened legal things stop it joey you're going too far and, you're going too far so now we will not say about things <laughs> there was another question i saw there, there is about me making another video and i yeah. am actually filming yeah. i filmed a uh, very short but maybe I'll add to it a very short shop tour so far I haven't edited it um, I've done some basic filming I don't really know what you need to put in a shop tour video because like you just show the shop and then that's it so I don't really understand what people do you show your, you show your fancy uh, you show your fancy YouTube awards just casually sitting in the background you know <laughs> yeah. don't you don't mention them but they're just sort of there catching a bit of light yeah. maybe a spotlight above them so yeah. anyway, I've done and that. I've also got and to talk about the 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 processing of wood because <laughs> something I always hear in these in these wood sh uh, shop tour videos is that wood comes in through the door and gets processed here <laughs> and then moves around to there. And I mean, I guess that makes sense. Kinda. But if my shop is if my shop is the size of a football field, then I understand that. But you know, yeah. my shop my shops aren't big enough that you need to really process it in in that order. Yes. Uh, yeah, I agree. So anyway, there is a somewhat of a, um, a shop tour video coming and I've just started filming making a gigantic table. Um, so making a, a 4.6 meter extension table. And so that is underway and I have started filming it. So at some point. 4.6 .6 meters prior to extension. Yeah, no, it's going to be uh, two After. two point two up to four point six. Oh, that's a cheaper. So it's a two point right. four meter extension. So I've just made the right. extension rails for that, which seem to work. So I'll give them a week to sit around and jam up and move around, and then I'll I'll refit them. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the room that it's going into? I assume it's a long. I haven't actually. I oh. I don't like to ask sometimes because I'd rather get the job than put them off. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this going? This sounds like a terrible idea. If you ask don't too many questions, sometimes you're like, oh, now that you've mentioned it, maybe I don't want this gigantic table. But I really <laughs> want to build it. So. Yeah. That's up to, up to them. But I'm going to be delivering it. It's, actually, it's, it's up north from me. It's probably an hour north. So um, I'll find out on the delivery day if it fits the room. Oh. And bearing in mind this is the last show of the season, what, what's been your favorite piece you've worked on this year, Joey? Uh, um, Any, uh, geez. I'd have to give that 30 seconds thought. Um, oh, you know, actually, probably the favorite <laughs> thing I've made in the last year, I made a round dining table with a walnut top and ash tripod legs. Um, and it was just very simple but kind of complex in the way it had to go together and I just thought the, the finished piece was exactly what I thought it should be and ex it was exactly what the clients wanted and uh, everyone was happy and so yeah re really liked that that piece um, yeah I'm surprised you took on another round table after your previous well, experience that, that was the table that put the kibosh to all our round table issues because 
I had made a few, you'd made a few, and I was aware that the round table wants to twist, you know, we we'll rock around and finally got it right with that one just by using really mm. thick timber. <laughs> yeah, right, yes. Yes, that's right. I remember we did actually talk about this, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yours turned into a frisbee and it went off the back deck or something. That, that's the what did one. happen to my last one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Brian? Yes, piece? Um, probably either the little Yakita coffee table with the Danish court. Mm. Uh, either that one or the big uh, clover table for the for the John Wardle exhibition. Probably, I think I'd, probably that I'd go one. for the second one personally. It was, um, I think, just all the circumstances around it, the speed at which it happened, like working pretty late nights on it, like. I look back on it as a as an achievement, um, and knowing that uh, Mike's just asking, uh, have I had any more inquiries about it? So I, I'm actually I'm making another one in. It needs to be delivered by May, so it'll probably start in like March, which hopefully will be a bit easier than trying to. When I was making the other one, it was making it over Christmas and January, so there were some massive temperature fluctuations in the workshop happening, so sort of laminating the leg stock. Uh, out of that bloody leatherwood um, was was really hard. Um, so hopefully, getting later in the year, March April, it's cooled down a little bit. Um, so it'll be a bit easier to do then. But um, yeah, it's a pretty full on piece. Like it's a good um, probably two months total process. Um, getting all the legs CNC by like butter, the assembly process. It's a pretty slow thing and it's big. Mm. Um, so that kind of, again, feeds back into the idea of how I've got my workshop set out. Everything is on wheels. Everything can be moved around. So I know that, you know, there's a flat piece of floor in one corner. <laughs> so if I'm ever gluing up a table, that, that's where that happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, so pro- probably the clover table. And yeah, Robin, you got to see yeah. it the night before it was delivered when I was pretty sleep deprived. And But um, yeah, yeah, it was a good, it was a good very, piece. Very cool. And my favorite piece of the year, wh- Robin. <laughs> when when are you moving back to when are you moving back to Queensland? Did you sell your house? So you moved back into. We've already covered that, haven't you? You're moving back in. Yeah, yeah. So it's my my the same house is just up for rent at the moment. Uh, the tenants who are in there, their dog has done some work yep. that's going to need some uh, some fixing. When I get back, like the lawn kaput, downpipes broken off. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it sounds like which you know I've got a soft spot for dogs because I'm a dog person, uh, but yeah, there's going to need to be some some repairing. But the I leave Tassie on the nineteenth of March, and then ferry trip okay. across to mainland, and then start the drive all the way back. Can't wait. A lot of people say you're going to stop in Melbourne. So is it? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, so we get into, into Melbourne, um, yep. and then we're, go- we're going to be hitting it pretty hard. So it's actually it's actually going to be quite nice. My folks are coming out from South Africa, and they're going to come with on the journey. <clears throat> so this is great for oh, my wife cool. and I, because we get some people to help out with the kids. But it's also, Dad is so pumped, because he's never done something like this, and this is going to be the longest trip that he's ever done. So it's, it's awesome. going to be amazing. But we're going to be hitting it pretty hard all the way just because we've got we're gonna have the kids with us so we're gonna go from melbourne to brisbane and then we're gonna go up the coast so it's gonna be a slightly different route right. and then yeah and then dad's gonna be around when i get there to help unload and 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 get the shop all set up again and uh, so hopefully hopefully cross fingers by the end of april i'll be back into the swing of things so are we tentatively going to be coming back in April for our next season then? Yeah, yeah. I think April would sometime in April would be a, a, a good bet at this stage. It's usually just yeah. after the clocks go back, isn't it? Or go That's forward, it. go back, go forward. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, usually it's right around yeah. it, and then we all get confused. Yep. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as we're still working, doing it during the day, it won't really matter. But it's yeah, that's why it's traditionally been then. So we may yeah. as well stick with that. Yeah. 
Yeah, cool. can't wait. Technique can't interiors. Wait. Make sure you check out Geelong when you ferry over God's Country. Yeah, so you know that the terminal, the ferry terminal, is now in Geelong, Robin. So the drive Not from Melbourne Geelong anymore. to to Melbourne Airport. How easy is that going to be mm. at seven o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Honest answer or a lie? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let, let's just let's be, just get some more okay. to this. We, you, this is uh, now going to be a, a, my seven-seater full with people, my SUV, and my trailer, with which I have very little experience on the back. And I need to drop mum and the kids off at uh, the airport in Melbourne. So you're disembarking, at, you're disembarking at seven? Uh, I think I disembark, at, it's out of five or six. Uh, you might you might be okay maybe. how long's the drive but yeah uh too long to melbourne is just an hour but okay. it sort of depends what traffic's like and then it's usually about another 25 30 minutes out to the airport so you could be looking at about two hours if it's bad yeah yeah but driving actually driving from the city to the airport in the mornings isn't as bad as like once you get into the city It'll sort of ease up a little bit once you get further north on on the city link. But I wouldn't yes, be going. There is a to comment the, there. The there is a because I'll be on the outskirts of the city. Uh, no, because the genius planners of Melbourne uh, put the freeways going straight through the city. Right. So yeah, the story just gets better. Unless you were to go on the rest Western Ring Road or something, but nah, it'll it'll take you on the Westgate Bridge. And there's a comment there: if there's an accident on the Westgate Bridge, it's a pain in the ass, and it is a pain in the ass because I live at the bottom of that bridge. I know everything about it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. But the um, that was very exciting. Will, will be my navigator. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, mm-hmm. next next year, April, we'll we'll do it all again. Hopefully, I'll be back in the shop, cutting some wood. And um, yes, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how things pan out. Because you might be moving next year, Brian, or out to the country, maybe. Fluid. We'll see. Fluid. To go to be. Go put a tent up next to. Um, <laughs> I was going to say put a tent up next to Lake Butters shed, and you'll be right. Get some free power. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. So plug plug yeah. my e bike into their into their panels. That's yeah, the one. yeah, um, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Obviously, a few things like losing a salary for a year and all those kind of things will sort of impact it slightly. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But no, I'm mm-hmm. kind of I'm open to exploring new places. Whether or not um, it's further afield than Melbourne, I don't know. Lanny's Lanny might be listening, so I don't want to say anything that could incriminate me <laughs> or get you in trouble. Um, yeah, and I, I guess Joey, for you, you've done your this year was your move, so next year's going to hopefully just be peace and quiet. Yeah, I mean, if it's anything like it's been for the last three weeks, it's just awesome. Walk outside. Yeah. Three seconds later, I'm in the workshop, and um, I'm I'm barely even leaving my property at the moment, so it's nice. <laughs> That that sounds like it's a, a bit of a social condition as well. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> You're supposed to only do that in your 60s. <laughs> uh, yeah, well. What can you say? No, that, that, that's awesome. But at least you've, you've, got, you've got somebody that works for you, so it's not like you're just by yourself in the workshop out there all day, right? No, no. And like my family at home, like we homeschool yeah. the kids, so like pop up for lunch, yeah. see the kids, see the wife. My parents are here, yeah. Yeah. see them. It's great. Yeah. Righto. Yeah, cool. It's one thirty. Let's uh, let's wrap this up. Any yes. last right. any last things you guys want to say before we any closing statements? Any closing statements? <laughs> um, um, uh, I just like I'd like to thank all the all the people that have got involved in the show this year. All the guests. Like, there's obviously no real well, there's no financial benefit to them coming on the show. They take it upon themselves and they come on and just hang out for an hour and have a chat with us. And it's a really nice way to just extend the woodworking community in, in Australia and New Zealand and yeah it's been it's been awesome I love doing the show yeah awesome and I never we, see it as hard work just like no matter how shitty a day I've had or whatever 
knowing that the show is on that night. I've never gone like, oh god, I gotta do the show tonight. Yeah, so and we've never just had get a, a nice glass of red wine and talk to you, boys. We've never had a bad or even difficult guest as well. Everyone has been amazing and accommodating. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and everyone's so just... yeah. Season five, I've already got a few lined up. Oh well, look at that. Yeah, I, I, I uh, second what you said, Brian. Is that especially with the guests coming on, they really are it's just a sacrifice of their own time, and they get. I mean, benefits are hard to find apart from everyone's audio pleasure. Um, but yeah, so thanks to everyone who sacrificed their couple of hours to come and talk bollocks with us about wood. So yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And I would like to say thank you to you guys because I know you say that this is a, you know, it's it's a fun thing to do every other uh, every other week. It does require time and it does require a bit of thought. You know, especially like today, you know, we've had to the. I won't say how much planning has got into it because I think people might be surprised by the answer. But you know, there's always some. It's always in your mind and it's always you know you're always working. So, um, you know, we don't we don't do this for for money. We don't get any. There's no financial return out of this, so I think the fact that we're still doing it and we've been doing it for this long is just a testament to the the fact that it's a lot of fun. And and now that we've got Instagram involved and there's a lot more uh, uh, interaction with people listening, I feel like it's taken that next step and next season will be even better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't we don't want to do it for money either. Like we will not. We're not really interested. Like we've had some sponsorship inquiries, and it's like it's not something that we want to do because we want to be able to talk independently about something. If we like a tool or dislike a tool, we we don't want to be talking, <laughs> thinking, "Oh shit, we might be affecting uh, a sponsor." Yeah. So yeah. it's nice to keep it independent. Um, there is a donation link if you go through our Instagram account and click through the the link tree. Uh, there is a link where you can donate, and that money is literally just like split between the three of us and it will buy us a coffee and yep. so there's always that option there if you want to donate to the show but we we don't want any commercial we don't interest. we don't promote it for for good reason yeah no nah. nah. yeah the idea is to one day be able to bring in massive amounts so we can all be flying around the world and interviewing international guests yeah, in their wood we'll shop have a, and, yeah. we'll have a ma- we'll have a mattress company on board you know robin can do the pitch for he can do the pitch for manscaped oh uh, yeah nice. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there but yeah for cool. now it's just if you want to if you want to donate some money we'll get a coffee out of it and that'll be all good yeah. cool, cool. alright guys alright guys take care farewell and, uh, we'll season see, 4 we'll farewell season 4 and we'll see everyone next year for season 5 sometime in April very good alright all best guys take care. happy Christmas happy holidays